We may wonder if there is a way to account for disciplinary differences in citation impact because we observe that citation rates vary substantially by discipline. Papers in biochemistry tend to be cited far more than those in mathematics. Scholars working in interdisciplinary areas may care more about the overall citation impact than others because of the reception of their work within any fields. The rationale for nominalization is to take three variables into consideration. These three variables are fields or disciplines, time and document types. Source nominalized impact per paper is a size independent metric and developed by Hank Mode in 2009 and revised in 2012. The equation here shows source normalized impact per paper is the ratio of impact per paper and relative database citation potential. Impact per paper is calculated as the number of citations given in the present year to publications in the past three years divided by the total number of publications in the past three years. The impact per paper is very similar to size score. The impact per paper would be normalized in order to correct for differences in citation practices between subject fields. The relative database citation potential is the ratio of database citation potential and median database citation potential. Database citation potential by definition is the average number of citations to publications in the subject field of the journal counting three preceding years. Let's look at an example. If a journal published 10 papers in 2008 throughout 2010, and these papers were cited 120 times in 2011. If we know the DCP is 6 and medium DCP is 3, what is the journal's SNIP? As we know, the RDCP is the ratio of DCP and medium DCP. So the journal's RDCP is 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Next, we would need to calculate the impact per paper. The impact per paper is 120 divided by 10 equals 12. Last, the source normalized impact per paper of this journal is 12 divided by 2 equals 6. More importantly, I will show you how to find source normalized impact per paper in Scopers. When you get to Scopers, perform a search for a journal title. And here's the example of SNIP scores from three journals. For those who wish to compare journals in Scopers, I'm going to demonstrate how to compare journals Here's what we will see by clicking the compare sources. Here's a graph of the trends of SNIP scores from three different journals. The blue line represents environmental science and technology. The red line represents journal of informatics and the green line represents annals of applied statistics. If your institution does not have a subscription to Scopers, you can check out Journal Indicator's website and find the SNIP. Next, I'm going to talk about category normalized citation impact, which is similar to the SNIP, but used by Web of Science. By definition, category Nominalized citation impact is the citation impact nominalized for subject area, year of publication, and document type. 
it is a ratio of uh, actual citations and category expected citations. Let's look at an example. A Planck Sciences journal, a paper published in 2014, has been cited 46 times. Is it that good, bad, or average performance? If we know the expected citation rate for this paper is 2.32. This paper's CNCI is a 46 divided by 2.32 equals 19.82, which is above average performance. I like to mention that category normalized citation impact accounts for multiple subject categories. When a paper belongs to multiple subject categories, the CNCI value is calculated within a harmonic mean of all category expected citations. This paper belongs to. Category normalized citation impact can also be applied to any level of aggregation, such as journal, author, or institution. When calculating a set of papers, the CNCI value is the average of all the papers in this set. Now, let me demonstrate how to find category normalized citation impact in insights. Insights, benchmarking, and analytics is a citation-based evaluation tool. If this is your first time to use Insights, you will probably have to create an account with Insights. But if you are already signed for Web Science, Researcher ID, or EndNote, you can use the same username and password to access Insights. In this example, I did a search for Greg Carmichael since there are name variations, we can simply baseline for all items for this author and get an overall CNCI value. As you can see, this author's uh, CNCI value is uh, 1.68, which is over one above the average. I like to emphasize that if a CNCI value is one, it means the performance at a equal level of the word average. If the values above one are considered above average and values below one are considered below average. I'd like to direct you, your attention to an implementation of this CICN. US News used the insights data to calculate the best global universities ranking. And you can see that the nominal citation impact is actually the CNCI. However, there are some issues with using category nominalized citation impact. A single highly cited paper may inflate the CNCI values given a small set of papers. Very highly cited papers can have an unduly large influence on the CNCI value given a large set of papers. If the baseline values for current year is very low, the CNCI values for current year can fluctuate more than expected. So Insights suggested us to look at other indicators alongside the CNCI, such as percentage documents in top 1%, percentage of documents in top 
10% and average percent higher. But the rationale for normalization is not always clear and transparent. Normalization assumes that uh, various uh, fields simply differ in their average citation impact or in the rate at which citations accrue. In other words, we assume some disciplines uh, produce big apples and others produce small apples. Next, we found some uh, literature papers criticizing that the standard fear normalized citation metrics do not actually eliminate disciplinary differences in impact. Last, some people prefer comparing the relative influence of journals within their disciplines in a more straightforward way, such as converting each unadjusted citation score to a percentile rank or a standardized score. So when we think about citation normalization, we would need to take fears, disciplines, time, and document types into consideration. Thank you for watching.